onto our side and on to Vuyatela because if they do it's going to be fantastic for us but isn't this cool look at that I love watching wild dogs and I think it's this breakaway pack from the low Sabi pack it seems like it's just the three of them there's one that's about to cross the road now so hopefully we'll get a situation where they will cross over and get onto our side but you can see they are quite lean which means they haven't hunted yet this morning or caught anything yet and so hopefully they will be catching something with us here it goes and you can see how fast they move now unfortunately it's going to try and cross through and there's just a number of different vehicles that are on this road and I think the dog's a little bit so Paula you're asking aren't wild dog sightings pretty rare well yes Paula they can be a little bit rare the thing about the dogs is that there's not too many of them left there's only about 220 wild dogs left in the Kruger National Park system and so that means that it is a very very special thing to see them now also at this time of the year we have a situation where the dogs are all denning and so the dens are in places where we sometimes can't go and they'll be very localized to a certain area and so what will happen is that the dogs will spend time in that area where they're denning and we then don't see them as much as we do in the summer months because in the summer months they move around quite a bit now i can only see the two at this stage there seems to be the third one hasn't come through just yet and they're still just trotting around on the road itself Come on, guys. Time to come north. Chitty Chatty Meg, they do move a lot. And so particularly when it's early morning and late afternoon, they'll trot around everywhere, going after things and trying to hunt. But they do nap quite a bit. So during the day, when it's hot, they will nap quite a lot here we go they are coming north which is fantastic so the one has just crossed past me now and there comes the third one at the back i can actually see the third dog coming and slowly but surely they're coming over the road there's one right here seb which is very cool so you can see he's just now going up towards weatella which is fantastic news so we're going to have the wild dogs hopefully for most of the morning this pack is notoriously difficult to follow because it's just the three of them they're not that easy particularly when they start hunting it can be really very tough to be able to follow them now I'm going to just quickly loop around so that I can keep up with these guys because I don't want to cut others off when it comes to being able to see them so we're going to just loop and see if we can't catch up with them on the other side But this is an awesome way to start the day for me. Well, I didn't expect to see the dogs. I, the last update I got about them was that they were far from here. So, Kapil, you're asking if the dogs smell like popcorn. Um, Kapil, no, they don't. And you can see how fast these dogs are moving already. They've already left us behind. They are parallel with me now, I think. I lost them going this direction. So we're going to have to do some serious off-roading to keep up with them. And where they're going now is not going to be easy at all. So I'm going to try and just let other guys know so that they can come and help me. Because otherwise I'm going to struggle to keep up with these guys. And it looks like they're actually hunting. The way that they're running is generally a way when they've spotted something. They get onto this like high gate where they lift their heads and move quite a bit. So there we go. Yeah, you see these dogs are now highly mobile north east it's towards uh, twin dams itself um they in the block now between the firebreak twin dams and weaver's nest so oh, this is going to be tough to keep up with them yeah afm i'd wait just on the northern side of the water hole so hopefully we're going to be able to keep up with these dogs and try and see if they will see if they won't move too fast for us and allow us to keep up uh, it's just the three dogs but I'm battling to keep up with them through here now hopefully we won't hit an odd fark hole Seb you're going to have to hold on sorry little button quail there's a little button quail that flew out from underneath the wheel 
Now, we are almost behind them again. I can just see them trotting in the distance, but this is why wild dogs are notoriously difficult for us to find, because look at how quickly they've gone from that main road to this area, and I'm battling to keep up, and we're doing very quick time off-roading, considering normally on when you off-road, you're going much slower because, well, there's stumps and varying other things, and so it's very difficult to actually keep up with them. Now, I've lost them from here. Have you got them? Okay, so Seb has got them again, which is fantastic news. Thank you, Seb. It's the best part about having a cameraman when you're doing this kind of things with wild dogs is that they can be able to direct you and tell you where to go because you end up in a situation where you... Now, I do apologize if we get any spider webs on lenses or anything like that. It is thick in here and the spiders would have built their webs during the night. Oof, I've also lost them. I think they've crossed over this drainage system. I don't know if we're going to be able to get through here, Seb. I think we're going to have to go around. Now, this is the problem with the dogs. When they decide to go, there. I can hear the Franklins in front of me, so hopefully that's where they are. I'm going to try and quickly get around that side, see if I can't find these dogs again. And while we do that, let's go across to Byron and get a little bit more of a calmer voice.